Well, this got me thinking a little bit because um, I saw an article about a fox that was recently rediscovered in California. Now, here's the thing. It said that it hadn't been seen in over 100 years, and then I saw other articles saying things like there was only like 100 individuals or 50 individuals or something like that. It was a Sierra Nevada fox. Uh, and I'm thinking, I'm like, well, if it hasn't been seen so long, how do they know there's only like less than 50 individuals? Is it yes. Well, then I kind of looked into stuff that, you know, the, the Lazarus species, the animals that had been seen once or twice or had been seen in like a hundred to, you know, however long it's been. And all of a sudden now we know where they are. And I came across this article by National Geographic and it talks about some of them. So I figured I'd go over some of them because I found it kind of interesting. Um, this bird um, right here is a great example. It looks like a moorhen that we get here in Florida. I mean, kind of. This this guy can't fly, and it looks like he's a bit pudgier. But, like, it's it almost looks like the same kind of basic build as a moorhen. No, I'm going to find a moorhen. See? Look. Kind of looks like it. I'm not completely crazy. You know, coots, moorhens. I mean, that kind of... Kind of does a little bit thicker anyway so here are these eight or a few species and I'm only going to talk about a few of them some of them I can't even pronounce but a couple of them you're going to find very interesting obviously the Fernandina giant tortoise um, I believe this was actually found by Forrest Galante I believe he was the one who actually rediscovered this guy and there's like a whole extinct or alive episode on it yeah I believe I believe that's the same one. That was really cool. We got to check out that episode. Not, I mean, yes, it's a tortoise. Like we we knew they were there. Not really too sure. Um, I don't know what this is. Not one I want to talk about. Um, wild horses, Caspian horses in Missouri and California. I mean, I guess not really what I care about as much. I mean, horses were brought back over here. So if they weren't found for a while and all of a sudden there was a population, it doesn't really shock me too much. Coelacanth. Um, this is the biggest one that everyone knows about. You know, um, fossils going back millions of years. Um, like, basically some of the first fish, you know, in the fossil record. And then all of a sudden, a bunch of them start showing up, up off of Africa from people fishing. And now there's like populations of them all over the world in like deep potions and I mean it's, it's pretty freaking cool that's like the biggest one everyone knows about millions of years old now all of a sudden there's a species now these are the same species this is one thing that people don't seem to get just because a, a crocodile is known to have lived during the time of the dinosaurs because of fossils it's not the same species of crocodile. They say these guys have remained unchanged. They've changed a decent a little amount. Not entirely. They're, they still look like crocodiles from back in the day. But it's not like it's a completely new thing. Like it's... They, they've changed a little bit. They're different species, most of them. And coelacanth... There was 90 species of coelacanth found. It's not like there was only one. There's a bunch of species. And these guys are remnants of those guys you know over time the modern versions so there's that um i cannot pronounce that as another flightless bird but this is the biggest one that i think that you guys would really be interested in you hear see this right here the terror skink i'm sure some of you've heard of that but this one the crested gecko of new caledonia now I know some people understand that crested geckos, the very like the crested geckos, the ones that we have as pets, like the very common, they the ninety percent of the time they don't have their tail because they lose them so quickly, like the derpy ones that don't look like they have a brain. They're so cool, but like in 1994, that's when they were rediscovered. 94. Look at that. People thought they were extinct. 
after a century of people thinking they were extinct and all of a sudden they find them. And you know what happened after that? A bunch were captured and now there are a ton of now there are pets everywhere all over the world so this brings me to part two of what I'm trying to say <clears throat> there are multiple species of animals that are relatively easy to take care of in captivity or would be or not allowed to be that are close to extinction now I take a Tom Crutchfield stance on this. Conservation through... And I'm going to mess up his words. Basically, if you can make money on something, it's going to be kept around. If you can make money on an animal, as much as I hate this to be like, people aren't doing this out of the kindness of their heart. When do people ever do things out of the kindness of their heart? You know what you need to do? You need to make sure that people know they can make money on these animals and the species will be fine. You have a certain amount of them that you're allowed to take out and then that's it. And then all of a sudden they're breeding in captivity and they're, they're, you're never going to have to worry about them being gone. And if you want to keep wild populations, keep some and keep them as if they're wild so that they're not used to people. Have them hunt on their own all that stuff. Just keep a population of them captive as real as possible, you know, as real life uh, to real life as possible, and you won't have to worry about that. Um, there's also this really cool frog. I don't know anything about that, but that's a really cool looking frog. Um, a lot of the stuff I'm not too sure of, but the crested geckos said crested gecko. This guy right here, you know, in 1994, no one knew these guys were still around. And now they're everywhere. Absolutely everywhere. I'm not big into Cresties. Not really, they don't do it for me, but I mean, I can understand why people are. But yeah. These guys went from literally not even knowing they still existed to being everywhere. And that's the kind of thing that can happen if you... If people really started putting their thoughts together and, like, you really want conservation. Same thing with hunting. If you really want conservation, you got to make it worth the while of the people where they live. You know? Uh, hunting in Africa, big game hunting, I know people don't like it too much. But they pay a ton of money to go out and do that, people who do it. And then the area gets money. The, the, the area where the animals live gets money to help protect the rest of them. And they usually take down only the big bulls that are killing everything else. And when you stop doing that... Lions go out of control, start killing people. Giraffes start killing people. And then they just have to send in, you know, park rangers to go kill those animals. And no one makes money. Well, you ban certain animals from being kept by people who would want to keep them and protect them. And there's no incentive for the governments to protect them at that point. Who's going to care about a little gecko? New Caledonia. Now, if you live in New Caledonia, don't take it as offense. I don't know anything about it. All I know is that it's a little island. So if there's people who live there, awesome. But do you think the people who care or live out there really care too much about if this gecko went extinct back in 1994? No. They don't. And you can't blame them because we do it right here in the United States. There are animals here that are going extinct or in the next few years probably will because you don't make money on them you don't care and you know I, I I mean don't get me wrong I think within the next 20 to 30 years um, probably all our king snakes will be gone um, there's a good chance that you know indigo snakes will be gone and pine snakes and all these other animals that are protected right now Gopher tortoises, 
They seem fine right now. Just wait until all of Florida is nothing but a parking lot. Then you're not going to have any. There's gators that are fine right now. But the more and more we encroach on their territory and people, you know, kill them because they, you know, do what gators do. It's not going to end well. Let me know what you guys think down below. Am I in the right here or am I in the wrong? I love it when you guys criticize me. It's great. It gives me a little, what is the word, a hate boner. <laughs> I'm like, oh, yeah. Somebody doesn't agree. Let's have a conversation. I really do appreciate the amount you guys are talking back and forth in the comment section as well. It means a lot. And I read every comment I come across. I try to. If you comment two weeks after this video is up, I might not read it. But in the first few hours, the first day of a video being up, I'm constantly looking at the comments. So please let me know. And yeah, I do reply a lot of one word stuff because sometimes I don't know what to say to a comment and I still want to reply to it to show you guys I've seen it. But let me know. Let me know what you really think because that's, that's you know, I genuinely do care. Thank you guys for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. I'll see you on the next one. Stay wild.